Good evening, race fans. Welcome to another edition of Motorsports Magazine here on the July 23rd show at Airborne International Raceway. Regular show for the regular division. Street Stocks, Flying Tigers, and Late Miles Sportsmen. Of course, the Tigers and Late Miles haven't been here for a couple of weeks, but I think they'll have everything in order. Joining them tonight for their third of four stops in the 94 season, the Cars and Stars of the American Canadian Tour. Several automobiles in all four divisions already pulling as we do this taping. We expect a few more, so we should have some great car counts for all the action tonight. You will see highlights of the Stocks, Tigers, and Late Miles. Of course, we won't be able to show you any ACT action, but assuming they run the, their show and their feature early enough, the add-on 150, we could always congratulate the winner, can't we? Can't tell you going in. I don't know how many fans realize this, but the race weekends are dwindling down in a big way here at Airborne. We will race all throughout the month of August, take the month of September off, and conclude the 94 season the first weekend in October with the Fall Foley's 300. So anyone who is farther back than about fifth or sixth in points right now, they may have their work really cut out for them. It's going to be tough. Our points leader have been strong all season. We'll discuss the points as we see some of the qualifying in the main events for our three regular divisions. As I said, the, the tour is in town. Some interesting surprises there is there are some cars who uh, have been a bit of a, a shock so far the 94 season. We've told you about them before. Good chance to congratulate Norwood, Ontario's Derek Lynch, winner of the 1994 True Value Oxford 250. Derek started on pole right alongside Junior Hanley. But the most important thing, he was still first when the checker flag fell. And again, a tough break for the veteran Ralph Nason. Had the race well in hand, made over $14,000 at the show. Most of that in lap money. But the Gremlins hit him again, fans fell out with mechanical problems. Ralph has one win so far this year. It was here on opening day, and his season has went downhill since then. So, you know, maybe tonight Ralph will get that second win here where he got the first one. He could really use a lot of drivers, though, you got to watch. Nason, Lynch, how about our defending winner, Brad Layden, Dave Whitlock, although he is not in the pits yet. Now, Dave Hall's from Petrolia, Ontario, farther than anybody but uh, he usually gets in kind of early, so we're watching for the 92 machine, the Ford, because he would be considered a threat to say the least. As I said, our three regular divisions back in attendance, the Tigers and the Late Miles, of course, had last weekend off. Some of the Late Mile guys in Oxford, some of the Tigers went over to Groveton, New Hampshire, at Riverside, they had a big invitational Tigers show. And the street stock guys, well, what can I say? They were highlighted last week. Those guys felt like they were running at 250, their biggest show of the year. When it was all said and done, a couple of New Yorkers up on top. Rick Frenier over Brian Pugh. You know, you saw the 08 of Dave Fields finish third. Well, visually you did, but it would take it away in the check line. An illegal tire. Give third place to the 23 of Joe Becker. Not much more to do right now, so maybe talk to a couple of the guys. Maybe get a hold of an ACT driver if I can. We will have interviews, highlights from all our divisions, main events, you name it. It's coming up next here on Motorsports Magazine. right now Motorsports Magazine, someone you really have to keep an eye for when the American Canadian Tour hits your city, hits your town. He drives the number 16 ACT automobile and came out of the ranks of the late mile sportsman, so he definitely knows his way around some of the tracks. Kip Stockwell, welcome to the show, Kip. Thanks. Well, you may remember that in his very last late mile race here, he picked up the checker flag, so he graduated in style. This is his third season with the Tour, and a little bit tough out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot different than the sportsman cars. Uh, you know, the Randolph Auto Supply Foley Services Buick is really doing well this year. And, uh, you know, the guys are doing a good job and uh, our sponsors are happy with us. And I guess that's what counts. You know, we haven't had a too great a season yet this year, but 
um, it's going to turn around and we're going to make it and I hope that uh, a lot of the sportsman guys are looking at us and I hope that they come the same route that we have. Well, uh, the fact that his season hasn't quite went as, as strong as he'd like, nothing to worry about there. Uh, let's take Ralph Nates for instance. Ralph, a lot of years of racing. He picks up a win here opening day and his, sours, or his season is really sour since then. So believe me, you're not the only one out there. Yeah, you know, Ralph spent a lot more money than we are, and, uh, you know, we're kind of a lower buck operation, and uh, but we're having a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, for the team that I've got and, and what we've got uh, as a car and, and the trailer and the truck and whatever, you know, we're, we're a lot better team than we show at the end of the week, and, uh, you know, I'd like to do a little bit better this weekend, and uh, I think we can do it. We just got to pull something out of the hat. Well, really, a couple of tracks that I'm sure you'd love to get that first win out would be either Airborne or Thunder Road, tracks that you competed on with the late miles, and really kind of your home tracks. Now, being with the tour now for so long, you travel to a lot of different tracks. Is the traveling something that is it tougher than you expected because you didn't have to do that much before? Yeah, you know, I'd like to win at Thunder Road, and I'd like to win here, but my first win would, I'd like... I'd like it to be at Thunder Road because it's only 30 miles away and, and all of my hometown people are there. And um, But the traveling isn't that bad this year. We don't have to go that far. And, you know, the furthest we go is four hours and we don't have to go to Canada anymore, a distant air. So the traveling part of it is not too bad. And it's kind of nice to go through Maine and, and, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire. And it's just a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we're having a lot more fun than, than we would if we were going to just the Saturday night shows. You know, we have a lot more fun traveling around and being a little bit bigger, and um, it's just a matter of time when we get there. Well, you are one of those guys who came out of the late model ranks and jumped into the tour, and this we've noticed a lot of the late model guys are, are thinking about that. We've had three or four that, uh, that have already done it this year. Is it something that is that easy to do? I mean, I know you have to make some changes in your style. The cars are a lot different, but is it that tough a transition, really? It's tough. Uh, you know, when you go from a 25 or 35 lap feature to 150, you know, it's not a shootout from the beginning. I mean, you got to stay on the lead lap, but you can't go from the rear to the front in 25 laps because you just don't make it. And the competition on, on ACT, the tour, is real tough. You can't do it anyways, and if you try, you're going to get wrecked. Uh, you know, it, it took me two years to really get so that I was real comfortable in a car and uh, it's a total different breed. I drove a sportsman car earlier this year for Norm Andrews uh, at Thunder Road and I'll tell you, when I got in that car it was like sitting back at home, but I was so used to our tires and, and my chassis and counting on you know what the car can do going into corners that I was almost unsafe to me and, and all the other guys around me. and. Uh, you know, I had a lot of fun with that car, and, and we did well, and, uh, you know, if I could have had it a couple more weeks, I think we could have pulled off a win with it at Thunder Road, and, uh, you know, I think it's a lot of fun, but I think it's, uh, they're getting a rude awakening when they get into one of these cars and really go for 150 laps, because they learn, uh, they learn a lot uh, in respect to how to set the car up for a longer distance, and I'll tell you, it's a lot different from a 35 lap to 150. The cars are way out at 150 laps. They can set a car up pretty good for 35 laps, and it'll go good for 35 laps. But after that, you know, the cars just kind of uh, fade away. And, you know, I'm not saying that they're, they're not going to come along because uh, a lot of the guys are. And, uh, you know, that's a real good division, and they're, they're learning a lot. And I think in another year or so, uh, they're going to be as competitive as we are and a lot of the guys are changing their car over now so they can run with us. And I think that the, eventually they'll be as competitive as we are and I think they'll be able to last 150 laps. And who knows, when we come to Airborne or Thunder Road, you may see one of them guys win in a, in a sportsman car. Well, you were saying that uh, the transition from late model to ACT is an easy and then you mentioned you came back to the late model ranks. That's something that some of the tour guys have done on opportunity. Of course, last year, for instance, Kevin LePage, who runs Grand National now, he did it with some success. You really, though, driving a tour car, jumping back to the late model, a lot of things you learn from the tour. That really helps with those late models. You really can get around a bit quicker than you did before. Oh, yeah. You know, setting these cars up for a longer distance uh, really helps. And uh, when you go into a sportsman car, they're a lot alike. And you've got an edge on some of the guys that don't run too many longer races. Like, I run... Uh, the 100 lapper and I really had a lot of fun and uh, you know the cars were a lot alike at the end you know the car didn't fade away and 
and a lot of the guys that were running used to running 35 lap races and setting up for 35 lap races you know faded away at the end and I had an edge over a lot of the guys and you know I wish that I could have run a car a few more races because I think I could have fine-tuned it a lot better and then I would have transferred myself so that I could drive the car and drive it fast and comfortable and all in the same round and he said that uh, of course the travel was cut down with the the cancellation of the Canadian series with the exception of Sinair. Another thing that helps in addition to the time is you save a lot of money doing that. The finances, uh, you know, you don't have to spend all that money in gas and just the wear and tear to go over. And financially, you really have to keep a few bucks in your back pocket because one of these things breaks, it's not just a two or three dollar job. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> you know, we have uh, haven't fin finished too many races this year because one thing or another and, you know, uh, it doesn't cost as much to uh, travel, but uh, the, the expenses from a sportsman car to a tour car are a lot alike. Um, you know, you still got to buy the tires, you still have to buy the fuel for the car, uh, you still got to buy the guy's way in and, and their food and whatever. And, you know, the expenses are, are a lot alike. You know, you don't go out and spend 25000 for an engine every other, you know, every 10 races for a sportsman car. But the, but the expenses are still there, and, you know, it's, you're right. It's not a it's not a two or three dollar uh, fix when you wreck. You know, it's a lot of money to run these cars. And if it weren't for our sponsors, you know, we just wouldn't make it. I want to thank my guest for joining me. I know he's got another practice session coming up in a few minutes here. You know, we've had about two or three first time winners on the tour this year. Why not the 16? Wishing him the best of luck. Driving the number 16, Kip Stockwell. Good luck. We sure would like to win tonight for our team and our sponsors. And uh, I'd like to thank you for for this interview. Thanks. Joining me right now, Motorsports Magazine, one of our lean flying Tiger drivers from Middlesex, Vermont. He drives a red, white, and blue number one machine each and every Saturday night, Jimmy Young. Welcome to the show, Jimmy. Thank you. Well, you're one of the few guys who, uh, in addition to Airborne, you run Thursday nights at Thunder Road, so you really have a lot of double duty uh, each and every week. Yeah, we, uh, we've we been running both tracks for oh, about four years now since uh, Airborne opened up. Uh, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of good racing, too. Now, you know, most drivers in the Fly Tiger actually say, well, you know, if the money comes through, I'd like to go to a late mile. Well, Jimmy did it backwards. He has been in a late mile. A couple of years ago, he ran late miles, but uh, he finds the Tigers every bit as exciting and a lot cheaper if you crash them up. Yeah, they're, they're quite a lot cheaper. I mean, you can still put some good money into them, but uh, late models, uh, if you wreck them, I mean, it could just about put a Tiger driver out for the season. <laughs> well, I can remember just last year, the year before, Jimmy came off a of pit road and got crowded into the wall, or I should say the, uh, the uh, billboard, yeah, the building <laughs> bright side, the back stretch, peeled back the hood of the car. You don't want to do that again, do you? No, uh, that was quite a lot of work to get ready for uh, a race two days later, but uh, no, we just soon stay out of the billboards. Uh, when something like that happens, I mean, you've been in there, you know what it feels like. You're a little leery the next time you come back and say, no, nah, I'm going to stay a little lower here on the track. I'm not getting anywhere near that sign. No, you can't really do that. I mean, you go out and you run them just as hard as you can, uh, whether you've wrecked the week before or won the week before. Uh, one thing about the Tigers is it seems that one or two drivers each and every Saturday really get hooked up. And to prove that, we've had like four uh, triple crowns in this division. And it's something that we didn't really expect. Triple crowns aren't supposed to be easy, but it seems that every week one or two guys just have that perfect setup and they're real tough out there and it's never the same guy. Yeah, uh, I mean there's there's a, a good bunch of guys that are that are really going good out here. Um, track position when you start the race helps a lot, uh, but all it takes is a, you know be behind the right accident and you come out in front and it, it's real hard to get around the outside of a good running car here. Yeah, that's the thing. These guys run so close when something happens in front of them, especially when they're in a group of cars, they don't have a lot of time to react. And when they do, generally, they're into the side of someone else. It's real tough out there. When something happens, you have to make a quick decision of where to go. Yeah, you got to be on your toes and looking down the track, you know, at all times. Uh, if you try to drive off the front of your hood, you're going to end up in the back of somebody before you get done. Now, when you travel to the races, now, tonight it looks like the weather's clearing. And forecast is the longer we go, the better it might be. But there's some weeks when we come here, Mother Nature threatens that you have to pay for the ferry trip over, pay to get in, a lot of time, a lot of expense, a lot of hassle. You get rained out of one of these shows, it would just break you because, you know, you went through all the problems and trouble, especially if you just put the car together that day. There's not much you can do about it, though. No, we've left right from Vermont in the pouring rain and sat here in the pouring rain all day just to be canceled out. 
and you know, there's nothing you can do about it. If you do stay home and you're in the points, uh, Tom will do whatever he can to get the race in. And if you're not here, he's not going to hold it for you. You're not the only one to sit in the pouring rain at this place and wait, believe me, many, including myself. Now, we have several guys who from Vermont who run at Thunder Road, make that occasional trip over here, one or two, maybe three times a year. Now, generally, and you run both tracks, so you know, the setup is nowhere alike. You can be high one of those guys. Even though at Thunder Road, you may say, this guy knows his way around. You probably don't figure that's the guy to follow at first until you know he's got the right setup here. Yeah, that's true. Uh... We, we don't do a lot of changes on our car from track to track, but we've been running this track for, you know, like four years now. And we've got them both so that our setup's pretty much compatible at both places. But a guy that just runs that one track, just learning the line out here takes a few weeks. It's, it's a real hard track to drive until you get to, learn, get to know it real good. Well, all year long we've been talking about Thunder Road getting a new pavement on. It's got a nice new coat to race on. Let's ask one of the guys who races there every week. So that much quicker? Uh, it's great. Uh, we're running uh, about a second faster uh, time this year than what we were last year. Uh, it's a lot easier on tires. Uh, we were really burning tires off last year. Uh, the new pavement isn't as coarse, so we get a lot better uh, adhesion to the track, and the track, the new track tire lasts a lot longer. Uh, real good improvement. Oh, you mentioned tires. That brings up another question. I've had some drivers, not many, but some, say that sometimes this place could be tough on tires. Now, a lot of times it's just maybe the setup isn't quite right. A lot of drivers say it's not tough at all. You find that some weeks maybe, yeah, it eats up the tires a little bit. Uh, it, it's, I mean, like they said, it's in the setup. Uh, you miss the setup a little bit and you go out and run, run hard uh, on an ill-handling car and you can burn a right front off, you know, very easily out here. Uh, but that's that's really the whole key is the setup of the car. Uh, we we run tires, you know, week to week, both tracks, and we put as many as uh, three four hundred laps on one tire. Yeah, see, they can do that because these cars, when they have the right setup, these tires last forever, don't they? Yeah, they're a, a hard enough compound. They stick good, but they they wear real well. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to beat this tire that we're running on now. I've asked a lot of drivers in the different divisions this question. Might as well ask Jimmy. You're in the Fly Tiger Division. If there was one rule you would love to go up to Tom currently say, please change it. One thing you'd love to change, what would you like to see change in that division? Uh, I'd like to see him change the rule on the heads. They're, uh, they're real hard to find, and the, I mean, that's, that's basically the reason they're, you know, they're hard to check. And I think if we could run a little bigger head or a little more open rule, then we could hit some of these other tracks around the area on a special, uh, special occasion every now and then. Well, we talked about Triple Crowns uh, being supposedly elusive, but they pop up quite regularly here at Airborne. This is a guy who could do it. Believe me, that one car could be very quick out there. I want to thank him for joining me. The driver of the red, white, and blue number one out of Middlesex, Vermont, Jimmy Young. Keep an eye on him. He does move quite quickly out there. Thank you very much. Getting set for the first action of the night. That honor goes to our Flying Tigers, starting on the pole. In the 76 machine, Mike Wells, he enjoyed to his right side with the 07 of Jeff Plunkett. In row two, to the inside, our defending street stock champ, the 99 of Moon Miller, and the 17 of Brian Bushy. Row three, the 75 Sparky LePay, and the 08 of Kevin Sorrell. Fourth and final row, pair of blue cars. To the inside, the 02 machine of Jeremy Tollitson. And starting on the outside, the 20 machine. I have a driver listing of Robert Patton, but I'm not positive that is who is in the automobile. We'll check on it. Tullinson loses the back end of the O2 up front. Wells, your pole setter, gets the early advantage. Behind him, side by side, Miller and Plunkett do battle for the second position. Out of four. It is Wells to lead the first lap. Miller runs second. Side by side for third. The 75 left hand of the 07 of Plunkett. Behind him, Bushy, Sorrell, then quite a distance back to the 20 machine, and a whole lap farther back to the 02 of Tolston. Mike Wells started first home with a finish there, but if he does, he's going to have to fight out the challenge of Sparky LaPan. LaPan looked to the inside, Wells shut the door on him. Behind him, Miller makes a move, flag it hard in the back end of LaPan. No damage, and now Kevin Sorrell comes to life, but he has no racing room. Six automobiles side by side coming out of four to complete the third lap. 
It is still Wells leading them all, but Spark of the Pan is all over his back end. Three wide behind him. Sorrell and Miller come together. Sorrell keeps it going. Miller forced the back off, and he's going to lose any chance of winning this one. Nose to tail. Wells LePayne come out of four. Halfway this time by, and you have to figure that Sparky had just waited for Mike to make a mistake. Run it through the 07 of Plunkett. He's had a good run to stay up there. He's had some heavy duty battles, but has not backed off a bit. Now the battle for the lead. LePayne to the preferred inside groove. Wells is going to have to give up the top spot. They come out to complete the fifth lap. It is uh, LePayne, your new leader. Wells drop kick back to second. Battle for third. Plunkett and Brian Bushy behind him, Kevin Sorrell. Now that LePayne is taking the top spot, he is simply pulling away from the field. Two to go, this time by for Sparky, and he has at least 10 or 11 car length lead now. Side, a hard side by side about Plunkett and Brian Bushy exchanging howdy do's big time. Kevin Sorrell got the best advantage. He passes Bushy, he's got some momentum. He will battle the 07 to Plunkett for third. But coming out of four to take the white and nobody chasing this guy. Sparky LePayne, second as well. Battle for third, the best on the speedway. Trouble up in one, Plunkett gets it to Brian Bushy, turns him sideways. But it all happened with the 0-2 of Jeremy Tolson. Didn't quite give Plunkett enough room. Sparky comes out of four. So once again, your top five. Infant, the 20 machine of three, which will have a chance of the elusive Triple Crown tonight. Getting second for the getting ready for the second of the three Tiger qualifiers. Starting out of the pole of the 53 machine. A victory just a couple of races ago for this guy, Gary Wood, completing row number one, the 82 of Toby Ebersol. In row two to the inside, the mean green 86 machine of Tyson Drown. He is joined by the 28 machine of rookie Russell Johnson. Row three, Wild Bill Sawyer and rookie Chris Fisher. Row four, Nate Esseltine, Bob Wood. Shotgun to the 49 of Mike Bushy. He has seen that triple crown we've been talking about. One lap down. Gary Woodyard, leader over Tyson Drown. Third is Wild Bill Sawyer. Fourth, the 71 of Fisher, the 82 of Toby Ebersol. Up front, though, it is simply Gary Wood. Gary, as I said, won a couple of weeks ago. Look at a pick up where he left off back then. Now, last time out, Gary didn't have much luck. His he had a flat, continued to run with it for a while. When the semi came around, said, oh, I guess I got more damage than I thought, and was forced to retire from before the main event even started. They will come out of four this time to complete the third of eight laps in the second qualifier. We will set the field as they hit the line. Your leader, Gary Wood, followed by Tyson Brown, Bill Sawyer, Chris Fisher, Mike Bushy, Russell Johnson, Nate Esseltine, Bob Wood. Bushy with the 49, started dead last in the field, is up to fifth, and you got to figure he'll even improve on that. Halfway markers, this time by for Gary Woody, has a nice lead over Tyson Drown. Barring a caution, looks like Gary is going to pick this one up, but this is racing, you can't be too sure about anything. Gary Wood, your leader. Chief starter Butch Henry single said, you got quite a big lead there, Gary. Tyson Drown still runs second, followed by Bill Sawyer, Mike Bushy, and Chris Fisher, your top five. Mike Bushy, the man on the move with the 49 machine. Although he is going to run out of laps before he can catch up to the leader. That Bushy machine moves into third, getting to the inside of Sawyer with two to go.
White flag this time by over the 53 of Gary Wood. Battle for second, best battle out of the speedway. The 86 of Drown is being hounded by the 49 of Mike Bushy. Bushy has half a lap to move into the runner's up, runner up position. Out of four, it is all Gary Wood. From the pole, green to checker. Gary wins it over Tyson Drown, Mike Bushy, Wild Bill Sawyer, and the 71 machine of Chris Fisher. Two down, one to go. So far, heat winners in the Tigers for tonight. This time, the 53 of Gary Wood with the win. Our first qualifying winner, the 75 of Spark and Hyatt. One more to go. Getting set for the third and final qualifier for our Flying Tiger Division. Starting eye on the pole in the 18 machine. This has been the hard luck driver in the last few weeks. Brad Duquette completing row number one, the 51 machine of Mark Eddy. In row two, you saw me interview this guy just a little earlier on Motorsports Magazine this week. Jimmy Young, outside row two. Another hard luck driver this year, the 29 of Mark Lamberton. Row three, the 74 of Dana Benoit, a triple crown winner. And outside the 12 of Dave Foster, fourth row, the 37 of Eldred Hutchins, the 8 of Jason Leo. Shotgun to our points leader in this division, the 77 of Hyde Park, Vermont's Eric Williams. Nine high cap automobiles, a high handicap heat. Nine of them come to life with Duke and Eddie leading around the way. Three wide, oh, Lamberty backed off. Mark was thinking about splitting Young and Eddie and said, no, I don't think so. Who would have thought this deep of the season with only five weeks to go? Mark would not have a feature win. Duquette from the pole jumps out to the early lead. Battle for second. Young on the inside of Eddie. Behind him, Danny Benoit and Mark Lambert side by side and three wide behind them with Dave Foster farthest out. Points leader Williams just finally gets by his first car. It took him almost three complete laps to do it, though. Duke is starting to pull away his bit as all the guys behind him jostle for position. As they come out of four, Brad Duke looks at his mirror and says, Hey, I'm pulling away. This looks good. Maybe I can pick one up here. Behind Brad, it is side-by-side -side for three rows. Young, Eddie, Benoit, Lamberton, Hutchins, Leo. Some great racing going on. Unfortunately, Brad can't see it, but I don't think he minds because he's leading it. Halfway markers for the 18 machine. Jimmy Young clearly in second now, but not comfortably in second as Danny Benoit is on his back bumper. Mark Eddy slips up high. That allows Mark Lamberton to go out. Four wide out of two. This was not going to work unless someone backs off, and Eddie does that. Wise move by Mark Eddie. But Jason Leo, like he shot out of a cannon, now gets wide out of four, so he's going to lose a couple back. Let's set the field. Duquette, no surprise there, who has about nine car lengths on Benoit. Then Young, Hutchins, Williams, Leo, Foster, Lamberton, and Eddie. Three wide into three. Leo, Hutchins, and Williams. Leo into the side of Hutchins. Hutchins in turn into the side of Williams. And the three top point guys all keep them heading straight with two to go. Benoit is catching Duquette, no doubt about that. He's cut the distance down to about five car lengths. And behind him, the battle for third is Young and points leader Williams. So Eric took some time, but he is working his way up quick. One to go for Brad. Our second qualifier, Gary Wood went green to checker. Brad's trying to do the same. They have something in common. They both started on the pole. Benoit is caught up to the back bumper of Duquette. Unfortunate for Dan, he only has one more turn to work him over. Not going to be able to do it. And Brad Duquette sees something he hasn't seen a whole lot of lately. A checker flag. It is not for fault of effort. He's had some great runs. He just doesn't quite always make it to the end. He did this time. Your top five in reverse order. Fifth to the red, white, and blue, number one of Jimmy Young. Fourth to Rice and Jason in the eight, Jason Leo. Third to our points leader, Eric Williams. Second to the 74 of Danny Benoit. And picking up the win, and he hopes for a couple of more tonight. Out of Mortisonville, New York, the Bills Body Shop, Duquette Brother Construction, Gregory Supply, Malibu, the 18 of Brad Duquette.
Out of turn two for the first lap. Galen Wood, your leader. Norm Gay runs second. They comprise the first row. Robin Wood ducks to the inside, and Norm Gay has position and let up. Looked like they're cut about a. Looked like they're cut about some contact there if they weren't careful. It is Galen Wood, Norm Gay, Robin Wood. No relationship between Galen and Robin. Oh, but look at the three wide battle in three. Bucko Branham shoots the seam in between Robin Wood and Glenn Wright. One car having trouble in the six. Rodney Weedy is falling way back early. Up front is Galen Wood, followed by Norm Gay, Bucko Branham. Bucko is the leader starting to pull away a bit. It is still Galen Wood, Norm Gay, and Bucko Branham, your top three. We are six laps down in this qualifier. Bucko Branham is having a loud side row one in the 83. Tim Patinka in row two to the inside. The 66 of Joe Thomas and the 75 of Pete Fecto to his outside. Row three, the 91 of Wild Bill found and the 35 of Ron Weston. In row four, the Zero Brand Dragon, the 76 of Steve Redditt. Row five, occupied by the 36 of Scott Carpenter. The 25 of Dave Wickham. Shotgun to the 45 of Brian Hoare. Only two qualifiers for Lay Miles tonight. Galen Wood wins the first. LaBelle gets the early jump. Couple of stories from drivers in this race. Brian Hoare racing. His dad, Doug Hoare, not in attendance tonight. And that 35 machine around Weston, well, he's doing double duty. He's got his ACT automobile here for the add-on 150. Ron's tour car is the former Steve Miller ride. Steve sold the car to Ron, and Ron had it at Oxford. Lamell, your leader. Joe Thomas. Now, Joe's had a real tough season. Can't see if he get everything put together, but he's got a second-place run right now in the qualifier. But I don't know for how long. It's a 91 of Wild Bill Fountain working over the back end of the 66 machine. Trouble in two. Nice piece of driving by second generation driver Brent Dragon. Apparently Brent here to impress his dad, Beaver, who was in attendance for the tour race. Brent got it loose and gathered it in. But he did go to the back of the pack for his efforts. It is still Lamel Thomas found your top three. A trend is forming through the Tigers and... Now in the late model qualifiers, the guy who sits on the pole is winning a lot. You might want to remember that. The Egglefield Ford 11 of Lamel. A couple of car lengths on the 66 of Thomas who has about six or seven I've found and more as Billy gets loose. Fourth is Facto. Fifth is the guy who started dead last, Brian Hoare. Followed by Carpenter, Weston, Wickham, Reddit at Patinka. Brent Dragon, halfway that time by for Lamell, and something tells me this second half is not going to be as easy as the first half. Although the only car bothering Lamell right now is the 66 of Thomas. Those two in a battle for the top spot have put about seven car links on third place Billy Fountain. Joe Thomas trying to figure out where do I make my move, how do I make it? A lot of experience in, in behind the uh, wheel of the 66, and he's sure that he is just anticipating where he's going to make his move. They are starting to pull away from the field. I think Lamell and Thomas have pretty much decided they'll battle between themselves for the win. The other automobiles pretty much in contention to, for their position they're running right now. Only one battle for a spot. Not going on between Carpenter and Brian Hoare for the fifth position. Everyone else is pretty much in line. Out front, Joe Thomas looked to the outside that time. Lost a little momentum. Exited in turn two. I would imagine Joe will duck to the inside here. Ah, oh, but Lamel thought about that. And as he gets the white, little blocking maneuver on Lamel's part. Now Joe says, okay, I'll try the high groove. Joe got a good run coming out of two. Problem is, Lamel had just a stronger one on the inside. They will go side by side into three, but as they come out of four, no longer side by side. Ron Lamel, the guy who started first, finishes first. Tom is second, followed by Bill Fowler, Pete Fecto, and Scott Carpenter to round out the top five. A rather good heat as Lamel jumped out to the early lead from the pole. Joe Tom is the only guy to give him troubles. Gave him a good shot, but Ron picks up the checker flag.
First of two qualifiers for the Mini Maniacs of the Motorway. Starting out of the pole in the 87 machine. That's our visitor from the Lake Placid area, the driver of the 87, Rick Preston. Starting outside row one, a brand new automobile, the 11. Now, I only have 11 Vermont listed, says Mike Clark, but the car says 11 New York, so I'm going to bet it's not Clark. Unfortunately, because he just took the lead. Also in this field, the 01 of Keith Nola, 75 of Chuck Farnsworth, 28 Skip Liberty, T-Rubble, the Beretta of 58, and the 75 of Farnsworth come together. Farnsworth re-fires the automobile. Preston, who started on the pole, is dying on the backstretch. We have Farnsworth slow, or um, Preston slow, LeGrave getting black flag. We will need a caution. The 87 of Preston is not going to go any farther. He is short to turn three of the high groove. Caution comes out. And we'll do it all over again. Getting set for the restart. Only one lap down. Your top five, you're looking at him. The 11, that is Jim Varno. Wanted to confirm it before I gave an A. And the 01 to Keith Nolan. Row 2, the 28 of Liberty and the 99 of Carey. Row 3, the 71 of Tony Broussard. And a nice looking, brightly colored 30 of first time competitor Matt Tracy. Shotgun, the 58. Yeah, that's that Beretta we keep talking about. Of uh, Brian Bunk. Varno, your leader. Side by side, Liberty and Nolan. And here comes Skip Liberty. Skip used to drive here a couple, of, a few years ago. Had a number nine back then. He's had other numbers. He has a pretty good run here, and he's looking to find that winning edge again here in the street stock division. Right now, he is leading them with two down. Right behind him, the 71 of her side, the 11 of Arno, 99 of Andrew Carey, the 01 of Keith Nolan, 58 of Brian Bonk, the 30 of Matt Tracy, and Farnsworth's going to retire the 75. The driver's door is uh, coming off, and not a good thing to happen when you're on a racetrack. There will be three down and three to go for Liberty as he hits the straight this time. Brassard goes way wide out of four. Skip opens the gap a bit. Liberty pulling away a bit from the 71 of Brassard. Third is still the 11 of Jim Varno. Battle for fourth is Nolan and Andrew Carey. Then it is the 58 of Brian Bach and a long ways back to the 30 of Matt Tracy. Two to go for Skip. And unless the 71 gets by him, but we have a caution, it'll be Skip Liberty picking up the checker, but not going to be easy as Broussard catches him, looks to the outside. These two drivers realize that it's probably going to be one of them in victory lane. Liberty to the inside. Broussard content to try the outside groove as they come out of four to take the white. Liberty still about two car lengths over Broussard. And if Tony's going to pass him, it's going to be in groove number two. Skip could have taken the 71 high there, decided not to, kept the low line, realized that, hey, last time it worked, why not this time? Now the 71 looks at the inside, but Liberty, I told you, he raced here many a years. He's not going to fall for that move. Skip Liberty makes up the win. The 71 of Broussard second, third to the 11 of Arno. Yeah, that pesky Beretta we keep talking about. The 58 of Brian Bach will take fourth, fifth to the 01 of Keith Nolan. And in this field, he has to be a little disappointed because Nolan was one of the stronger cars when the lineup came out. Five will pick him up coming out of four. It will be the two of Leo Dugan and the 37 of Dave Parent to set them on their way. The second of two qualifiers. Behind the front row, we find the 66 of Corey Trombley. The 81 is Bob Wells. 91, Sean Fountain. 29 of Brian Pugh. The 60 of Terry Gwinnup. 61 is Ralph Doss Jr. 77, Rick Frenier. 92 of Dan Gibbs. Hang on, fans. Here comes Brian Pugh on the outside. Three wide with a 29. Trouble out of four. Gwinnup got into the side of Wells. Cuts in front of the 77 of Frenier. But everybody keep them heading straight. It is the two of Duggan, your leader. The 66 of Corey Trombley runs second. And the 91 of Sean Found runs third. Could be ironic. The 66 late model of Joe Thomas finished second in his qualifier. Maybe Corey will do the same in the miniaturized version. Duggan, Trombley have found your top three. But behind him is the points leader, the 29 of Ryan Pugh. Then Dave Parent, Rick Frenier, Terry Gunnup, Dan Gibbs, Ralph Doss Jr., and Bob Wells. Big names, but somehow the only one making his move to the front is Brian Pugh. 
The black two of Duggan, still your leader, hasn't really lost a whole lot of distance. It's Corey, Corey Trombley. Battle for third, found in Brian Pugh, and if Brian Pugh gets that car heading the way he wants it to, he will move toward the front in a big way. And he better think about it, because catching him in a big way is a 77 of Rick Frenier. The 29 and the 77, I'll tell you, with five weeks to go, it's going to be decided between those two. Even though in the points, the 92 of Dan Gibbs is third, I do not think Dan will get by both the 29 and the 77 by the end of the year. And right now, nobody has got by that two machine. So far tonight, if you start on the pole, the odds are you're going to win it. And uh, right now, Leo Duggan attempted to do just that. Corey Tromley's trying to say, no, nah, I don't think so. I want this one. But Corey just can't seem to muscle up trouble between Freddie and Pugh. Brian Pugh, the only one to suffer, really backed off in a big way. Meanwhile, back up front, it is the Duggan and Trombley show. Leo pulling away from Corey, and as Corey battles for the lead, the other two battle for third catch him, but it's over, fans. Leo Duggan wins it over Corey Trombley, close for third. The board says Sean Bound nipped Rick Frenier. I'll go by that. Fifth, the 92 of Dan Gibbs. Hard luck story, Brian Pugh with a 29. Moved up quickest of all, but had trouble with one or two laps to go with a 77 of Renier. Had to back off. He does not finish in the top five. Well, don't worry, Brian. You got a main event to try it all over again. Getting... Getting... Getting set for the 20-lap main event. Front row, the 76 of Mike Wells and 99 of Moon Miller. 27 automobiles set to take the green. Wells and Miller lead up to the stripe and we are underway in the 20 lap main event. The big guys of the Voids are starting all together deep in the pack. The three he winners, however, are in the front half and watch for them, Sparky LePan, Gary Wood, and Brad Ducat. Smoking them all up in three, several cars hit the binders, some of them tap each other, that's where the smoke came from. One car in serious trouble coming out of four. Very slow. May have cut a tire. It's the 28 of rookie Russell Johnson. Well started on the pole, and that is right where he's running right now in position number one. Great battle for second. Miller to the inside. LaPan to the outside. Behind him, Gary Wood and Brian Bushy doing battle side by side. Trouble in three. Eldon Hudson got turned around. No need to look at it because he's already underway again. But Eldred, it's going to happen, buddy. At least it happened very early. you got plenty of time to make your way back to the front. Also in trouble, the one of Jimmy Young. He is slow in the back stretch. Looks like he's trying to get it back going, though. Wells, your leader. Look at this group come out of four, though. Unbelievable that these guys are not tagging more. Trouble up there. Young, he was not part of it. He has been slow for about a lap. Turned around is the 0-2 automobile. That's the car who's only been here a couple of weeks. The O2 driven by Jeremy Tollison. And the trouble on Young is simple. He done lost the wheel. He is setting up fireworks as he heads to the pits. Your top five with three down. Wells, LaPan, Miller, Wood, and the 86 of Tyson Drowned. It'll take a while to line them up, so we'll take a break and be right back. Well, we were all set for the restart. Chris Fisher came out of the pits to rejoin at the back of the pack and uh, put a new tire on. And if my cameraman for tonight can just kind of look just in front of the start finish line here, she'll see a tire being wheeled away. That belongs to the 71. Guys, you're supposed to put the lug nuts in when he comes back out. Apparently, someone didn't do their job. So we're going to have another slight delay. That tire is from the 71 of Fisher. And we had them all in line. It was remarkable. The guys were behaving. So we're going to take another short break, and we'll be right back with the conclusion. Three down, 17 to go in the main event for the Tigers. Three down, 17 to go. Let's take a look at the front of the field. Mike Wells, Sparky LaPan, row one. Moon Miller, Gary Wood, row three. Tyson Drown and Brad Duquette. Actually, Moon and Gary are in row two, aren't they? Tyson and Brown in row three. And here's something ironic. The outside group for the first three is the outside of rows one, two, and three are the three heat winners tonight. Those guys are hungry to go two for two. No semi, so no triple crown. Out front, Sparky gets the jump. 
He'll take over the lead. Cut in front of previous leader Mike Wells. Gary Wood on the outside. He takes over second. Brad trying to take third. If Brad gets around the 76, we'll have the three qualifying winners running one, two, three. But guess what, fans? We got some awful fast cars moving up. Guys like Mike Bushy and Bill Sawyer, Dave Foster, Eric Williams. Brad Duke puts it up on two, brings it down, gets into well, er, uh, Mike Wells. Laverton, hard into Wells. Eversol finds Laverton, and we got more problems coming off at two. Half of 07's bodywork is missing. Plunkett, the left side looks great, the right side is non existent. Let's see who is involved. Mike Wells, who got tagged by a couple of automobiles. Let's take a look at the 29 of Lamberton. Mark Lamberton is way off of the track. He came off, was avoiding the accident, hit the 76 of Wells, and they got nailed from behind. Heavy duty damage on Mark's car, and what a tough luck story. This guy should have won about two of these, at least two by now. But uh, I think the Lamberton crew has a little bit of work to do. As Mark is limping it, he's gonna try to make it to the pitch. We'll have a couple of laps caution. Mark Eddy pitting. Several automobiles going to the pit. Tyson Drown is tall. Well, he's not moving in row two. Bob Woods retiring the automobile. We'll take a break only because this may take about half an hour because there are several cars in the pits and a lot of scattered pieces on the front stretch to pick up. Getting set for another restart. Four down, 16 to go. You know, we lost the battery earlier, very early in the show. We may use up our second and final battery in this one alone. This has been a long four laps. LaPan and Gary Wood lead him to the strike. And let's see if we can get about four or five laps before in the next caution, guys. The guys who won the three qualifiers run one, two, three, and they just happen to be three wide going into three. Gary Wood takes over the lead. Brad Duke at run second. Sparky is back to third. Moving up at his inside, the 49er Mike Bushy and Dave Foster curling round out the top five. But directly behind Foster, points leader Eric William. Sparky has got some handling problems with this 75. He drives it very wide at it, too. A couple of more will get under him. But up front, it is Gary Wood, Brad Duke, and Mike Bushy, Dave Foster. Well, Foster gets to the inside of Mike Bushy. Terrific battle for third. Gary Wood, a couple of shows ago, picked up his first win of the season. He is hoping to pick up number two here in about 14 laps. There's not much we, more we can say about Brad Duke getting in second. He has been like this all year long, and within a lap or two of the finish, always seems to end up out of it, and usually has nothing to do with his driving, just gets involved in someone else's mistake. Right back, one of his crewmen were saying they've done just about everything. Dance on the hood, send it to a local priest for the car to be blessed. You name it, they've done it. Let's see if it works tonight. Gary Wood starting to pull away from Duke and the rest of the field. Some of the cars are starting to get a little antsy out there, running two, three wide, and not afraid to mess it up as several automobiles are doing a little bumper banging. Among them, Foster and Williams battling for third and fourth. Nine down, 11 to go this time. The field, as they cross the strike, Gary Wood, Brad Duke, Dave Foster, Eric Williams, Mike Bushy, Dan Benoit, Jason Leo, Bill Sawyer, Spark Killian, Eldred Hudson, Moon Miller, and Mark Eddy. We'll be halfway this time by, and Gary Wood is starting to pull away a little bit. Now, of course, everyone figures, well, if Mark Will or Eric Williams gets behind, or I should say in front of Duke, and maybe he can make up the distance and catch the leader. Do not know, because right now, Eric is battling for third with Foster. Eric on the outside groove, and normally he likes there, but he's not having as much success as he normally does tonight there. Jason Leo has moved up to about seventh, so Jason is still in the thick of things. Jeremy Tolson in the blue 02 going another lap down. As Gary Wood pulls to the outside, coming out of four, he'll put him that lap down. And this is where guys battle for position have to be careful. They don't want to get boxed behind a slower automobile. Duke gets by, Foster gets by, Williams gets by, Benoit gets blocked and lets the eight of Leo by. So right now, Leo is directly behind Williams. The other guy people are watching, the 37 of Hutchins, is about 10th right now, and he's got Lambert behind him, but uh, he may need a caution to find the leader at this point. 
It is Gary Wood, your leader, by about nine car lengths. Duke had run second. Dave Foster third. He gets tapped on the quarter panel by Williams. Williams lets up, lets Foster correct, but when he did so, Leo got to the inside of Williams. Leo almost took the points leader around. He backed off. Now Danny Benoit in the back end of Leo. Race and Jason was courteous enough not to turn the 77, but he almost got turned by the 74. Five to go for Gary Wood. Gary is saying, just please, two and a half more miles. I'll tell you what, the owners of this automobile are in the pits, and I'm sure they got their fingers crossed right now, too. Terrific battle for second on back. Duke at his second, but directly behind him. Foster, Leo side by side. Then Williams, Benoit, and Mike Bushy. Positions two through seven, highly contested. And without a caution, none of them are going to catch that 53 machine. Battle for second, the best battle on the speedway. Brad Duke at door panel to door panel with Jason Leo. Racing Jason makes the pass. Benoit hard into the back end of Foster. Dave Foster might remember that a future encounter as he got drilled going into one. Didn't lose any momentum. Matter of fact, I think he tapped the back end of Duke to correct it. Two to go for Gary Wood. Two for win number two, you might say. And Jason Leo is starting to catch him, but will he have enough time? Leo has got about eight car lengths between himself and the leader. Eric Williams makes a pass on Brad Duke for third. Brad trying to fight back. He's going to jostle. Coming out of four. White flag for Gary Wood. About six car lengths. Make it a car link. Leo nails him up in the turn. Catches right up to his back bumper. Jeff Plunkett moves over and says, hey, this is the battle of the leaders. I'm not going to get involved in this. Here they come. The last turn. Leo splits him in half. The drag race to the stripe. Have a car link victory for Gary Wood. Jason Leo second. Third to Eric Williams. Fourth to Brad Duquette. Fifth to the 12 of Dave Foster. A remarkable win for the 53 machine of Peru, New York's Gary Wood, his second win of the year. And that Autoradex security system, plus for Lays Monte Carlo, had just enough to beat Racing Jason tonight. Another lap, and I think we would have seen the Red 8 in victory lane. But wasn't to be. The Black 53, for the second time this year, will carry the victory honors in the main event for the Tigers tonight. Twenty-two late mile sportsmen set to do battle for 30 laps here at Airborne. The front row, the 79 of Galen Wood, the 50 of Norm Gay, in row two, the 61 Robin Wood, 48 Glenn Wright. Top six routed out by Buck O'Brien to the inside, and on the outside, the 42 of Tony Poisson. Galen Wood from the pole gets the early jump by Norm Gay. Meanwhile, on the inside, Robin Wood going to try to take second. Norm is wide. And now he has the opportunity to tuck back down if he'd like. Only 22 cars answer the call here. Not the biggest field we've had at Airborne, but could prove for some interesting tactics. A couple of guys in this race that might be tired by the end of tonight. Ron Weston and Buck O'Brannon. Why? They are running in the add-on 150 for the American Canadian Tour. Now, Ron Weston has an ACT car. Buck O'Brannon is using the same car that he is currently running fifth with right now in the late model race. All he does is put some ACT tires on it, and he goes out and runs with the big boys. Grant, he's a little short on horsepower, but I'll tell you why. He's having fun doing it. Galewood and Norm Gay, they started in the front row. They run one-two. Behind, behind them is a family affair of Robin Wood and Buck O'Brien. Fifth is Danny Bridges. It is all New York in the top five spots, but there are some pretty sharp Canadian, or Canadians, yeah, right, Vermonter directly behind him, namely Ron Lamel, who is certainly capable of pulling off a win. How about Pete back going around Weston? North Gay catches up to the back bumper of Galen Wood. These two have separated by about a dozen car lengths from Buck O'Brien. Remember, the engine in that 63 is going double duty and more tonight. Of course, if he makes it through the lay mile, that's the one he wants. If something happens to the engine in the ACT 150, he's not going to mind too much. 
Trouble in what? It's the 36 of Carpenter getting turned around. And Chief Sutterbush Henry thinking about throwing the caution. Scott's kind of playing a game there. Caution comes out. Scott takes off. Remarkable how when the yellow comes out, some of these cars seem to fire up. But that will bunch up the field. And I do not think that Galen and Norman wanted that group right behind them. Unfortunate for them, that's exactly where they'll be on a lap six restart coming right up. For resumption of the 30 lap main event for the LMS division, only five of the books, 25 to go. Galen Wood and Norm Gay will be setting them on their way just as they did at the initial green. During the caution, Dave Wickham pitted. Now he's back out in last position. The story there, Dave Wickham is the points leader coming in. He had about a 17 point lead on Scott Carpenter who was in the pits because of what appears to be a broken or some sort of problem to the axle of the automobile. So the top two points guys are sure some problems. Third in points is Steve Renadette and he's running about 12 so he could eat up a bunch of points here if Wickham doesn't get moving. Speaking of moving, how about Buck O'Brannum? Norm Gay was unfortunate to be in the outside groove of the restart. He's paying for it. He went from second to fifth in one lap. It is Dale and Wood and Buck O'Brannum knows the tail. Third is the 11 of Ron Weston. Fourth is Bridges. Story there, the car right in front of Bridges, being driven by Ron Weston, was Danny's car last year. Fifth, by the way, the 48 of Glenn Wright. And Glenn looking awful strong early on. Running six, our leading rookie. Fifth in points to 35 of Ron Weston. Up front, Gale and Wood is tucked to the inside groove, forcing everybody, including the 63, to look to the outside. Buckle goes to the second group, and now Lamel fills the gap. They touched a couple of yellow black automobiles. Mess up some sheet metal, but no damage. Bucko slides right behind Lamel. Lost the position, but was not running out losing anymore. Poor Norm Gay started outside row one, has not gotten to the inside. The train is going by him, and he is all the way back to 11th. Dale Wood has led the first nine. The only one he really wants to lead is lap 30, however. Your top ten with nine down, in order. Galen Wood, Ron LaBelle, Buck O'Branham, Danny Bridges, Glenn Wright, Ron Weston, Pete Becto, Billy Fountain, Brian Hoare, and Steve Renadat. I mentioned that Weston and Branham doing double duty with the tour. There may be a third driver doing the same to zero of Brent Dragon. He was scheduled to start on the pole in one of the qualifiers, but did not come out. I don't know what car he's using. He may be pulling a Branham and using the same car he's running in this race. Lamel to the outside of Wood in a battle for the top spot. Lamel can't hold the traction. Buckle was thinking about going under him to return the favor. Was not able to do so. One car that has come to fire is up to about 7th to 45 of Brian Hoare. He is about the only guy able to pass on the outside. Gets loose out of four that time, but the 45, that gosh dodge of Brian Hoare is on a move. Up front, Galen Wood, Ryan LaBelle come together. Big time, Galen will spin the 79 as LaBelle taps him. Both automobiles battling for position. One of the same piece of real estate, and both are going to go way to the back. Galen Wood breaks the 79. Fireworks show on Galen as he has broke the front suspension. The wheel about ready to come off. And that may be a busted axle. Certainly will end Galen's night tonight. A tough break for the local driver. Your leader, another local driver, the 63 of Buck O'Branham. He would love to win this, to carry his momentum, going to tour trouble and two Billy found in the side of Pete Facto. Found do to the inside of Facto, got a piece of him, turned him around. Caution immediately comes out, however. We have 14 down, 16 to go. We may back it up to lap 13. But in either case, it will be Buck O'Branham and Danny Bridges in the front row. Getting set for the restart. 14 down, 16 to go. And the lights come back on on top of the pace car. Apparently, call from the pit. Someone is very close to coming back out. They'll give him a courtesy lap. Good chance to look at the field. Buck O'Branham and Danny Bridges in row one. Glenn Wright having a terrific ride with Ron Weston in row two. Brian Hoare, Billy Fountain in row three. And, do you know, the winner may not come from those three rows because there's some pretty strong drivers behind him like Renadat, Dragon, Wickham has moved up. Of course, the points, well, they're going to get jostled a little bit here. Some of the guys way up in the points have not had a good night. Points leader Wickham, I just mentioned he's moved up. He is currently 10th. Scott Carpenter retired very early. Steve Renadette, he's up to 7th right now. 
Brett and Dragon just behind a couple of those guys, and Ron Weston is running fourth. They're your top five in the points. Kate Wetter and Bucko Branham tied for 10th coming in with the 46 of Doug Hoare. Doug not in attendance, so Bucko has certainly passed him in the points. But the other member of that racing family, Brian, the son, is fifth, and he is on a move. Bucko and Danny set him into one. Danny Bridges, good idea. Get right behind the leader. Don't let anyone go by you on the inside. Norm Gay was not fortunate enough to have that happen. There goes Brian. I tell you, that 45 may be the quickest thing. Big time trouble at three. Glenn Wright, Steve Renadette. Tony Poisson has climbed the Glenn Wright automobile, and Glenn Wright is examining the rear suspension of the 42 right now. Also involved the 61 of Robin Wood. It all happened similar to the Lamel Galen Wood incident. They all wanted the same piece of real estate, and you know, you can't work miracles, guys. You can only put one car in one position, and everyone went for the same piece of real estate. You can see what happened. Worst damage of 42 of Tony Poisson has climbed on. The 48 of Glenn Wright, and that normally means severe damage to both automobiles. Obviously, it'll take a while to straighten them out. We didn't even get a lap in the books, so it'll be the same two in the front row, Bucko and Danny, when we, when we resume it. Both the cars involved able to continue. The 42 points out, the 48 of Glenn Wright. Glenn's only problem, the hood was loose, had to have it go, go and have it torn off. Tony points out, guess we'll say he has a kryptonite rear end in that 42 because it held up and it looks pretty good. Front row, again fans, Bucko Bradham, Dan Bridges, but watch row two, Ron Weston and Brian Hoare. <laughs> Trouble in one, Ron Weston in the side of Danny Bridges. Billy Fountain benefits most of all, will move all the way up to second. And Danny Bridges says, what happened? I'm driving to the turn and the 35 got into me. Ron Weston take it, Brian Hoare high, Brian out of the binders, almost touched the concrete. I believe Rob Weston may have busted. He carried the 45 way too high, and I think the 35 busted. And he will not be able to get in the pitch too easy. The car he came in contact with is blocking him. He goes to the other side of the pylon. So, we'll line it up, but the guys who were doing pretty good up front uh, are no longer, at least a couple of them, on the restart. It will be Buck O'Brannum and Brian Hoare to set them on their way. to go but a new front row Bucko Brad up still the leader but now Brian Hoare completes row one watch out for the pair in row two though Billy Felton and Steve Renadette here they come out of four Bucko gets a little bit of an edge coming off four Brian Hoare gets into it going into one will not be able to cut in front of the leader let's see who has the momentum coming out of two Bucko drifts a little high Brian Hoare not able to pull in front of that 63 yet Two people have won two features so far this year in this division. Doug Hoare and Scott Carpenter. Surprising thing, even though his dad has won two, Brian Hoare, who is now the leader, had not picked up a victory yet. In five official stars, he's had two top five finishes, but never a win yet. Maybe tonight. Brian Hoare has Buck O'Brien all over the back of Billy Fountain runs third. No doubt about it. Billy wants a caution now, so he'd be right behind Brian Hoare for another restart. Bucko doesn't want it. He'd be stuck in that outside groove. Your top five. Brian Hoare, Bucko Branham, Billy Fountain, Steve Renata, and Brent Dragon. And I should mention points leader coming in tonight. Dave Wickham has moved all the way back up to sixth. Brian Hoare stuck the ball away from the Brandon machine. There will be 18 down and 12 to go this time by. Billy found running at third. has lost a little distance. So I know he wants a caution now. Red it at fourth. Fifth still for a drag. And they're followed by Wickham. Thomas, Lackalade. Rodney Wee runs ninth. He's having a great run. Brian Hoare, about three, three and a half, maybe four car lengths on Bucko that time by. It will be ten to go the next time he gets a strike. Steve Reddit that is starting to think about putting some pressure on Wild Bill for the third spot. Indeed, ten to go for the Gostage 45. We started with 22. 19 of them still remain on the track through all those cautions. 
one of the three that have left early. Scott Carpenter, second point. Another one was Polster, Jalen Wood, who was having a great run until him and Ron Lamel Jr. did a little uh, tangle up in three. Brian Hoare, Buck O'Branham have pulled some distance away from Fountain and the rest of the pack now. Billy, all he can do to hold on to third. We have trouble off of two involving Patinka and Adams. Both cars continue on, but now the caution comes out. Oh, and on the back stretch, you didn't see it. As they were hitting the binder, Joe Thomas and Lonnie Lacolade came together quite hard. The caution is not for those two automobiles. They'd refired. The caution is for some debris out of turn two, probably left from those automobiles. But obviously, it's right in the inside racing groove. They'll pick that up. We'll start it over. This is the caution that Wild Bill wanted. On the right, row two, inside out, Fountain and Redidet. Don't give the checker flag to Brian Hoare yet. Still a lot to be settled in the next eight laps. Getting set for the lap 22 restart. You know, we ought to institute a new rule. 30 laps or one hour, whichever comes first. I think some nights like tonight, the one hour would win out. Brian Hoare, Buck O'Brien in row one. Billy Fountain and Brent Dragon in row two. And the top five cars are about a quarter of a straightaway in front of the pack. That's not going to work, boys. Yellow flag comes out. Everybody tones it down. Everyone up front using their heads. The top five, Brian Hoare, Branham, Fountain, Dragon, and Redditt had about a quarter of a lap, or a quarter of a straightaway on the 25 of Wickham. That's a little too big of an advantage. Now, they could throw the green flag here. Joe Thomas very slow heading into one. They're going to hold out the yellow. I have seen certain situations where the green comes out quick and the leaders get messed up, and sometimes we have a major mess. There'll be one more lap. They'll take him around. They'll let Joe Thomas pit the 66. Let's take a look at the field with 22 down, 8 to go. We've got a couple of surprises along the way here as some guys who uh, were up in the points not having great runs. We mentioned Carpenter fell out early. Ron Weston, your top rookie, fifth in points, came together with uh, Lamel, or not Lamel, came together with Dan Bridges early on. He's dead last on this restart, though I don't think he's a lap down. 18 automobiles remain on the track with 8 to go. It will be Brian Hoare, Buck O'Brandup in row one. Couple of black automobiles in row two. Billy Fenn, Brent Dragon, row three, Renida and Dave Wickham. Yeah, this time they let the back of the pack run with them a bit. The green flag comes out. Brian Hoare uses that. Oh, Billy found it to the side of Branham. Billy and Bucko came together. He gives them another shot up in two. Also involved Patinka, Dragon, Wickham, Fecto, Lamel, Renida, Rodney Weed. Glenn Wright, now, they are going to say, who is this caution for? Several cars pulled away, including Buck O'Branham and Billy Fountain. They pulled away. The only automobile not moving, the 11 are on Lamel Jr. Very interesting to see what kind of a lineup we're going to get coming up. And I'll tell you what, hang on. You'll see that lineup after this uh, probably a couple of minute break here as they clean up the mess. We'll be back with hopefully the last eight laps here on MS MSM. We were set to go back to a restart, but the caution light remains on. I think they're going to take one more lap. I'll tell you, though, during that last caution, the reappearance of the pole setter, the 79 of Galen Wood, they made the repairs. He's back out, although several laps down. But Galen, very happy to see those long extended cautions. It allows him to get back out with, with the uh, final eight, la eight laps yet to be run. So anyone who fell out a little later than he did, if they don't return or haven't returned, he will pass him and maybe get a couple extra points along the way. On eight to go, Brian Horbrand Dragon in the front row. Steve Rennett at Dave Wickham row two. Lonnie Lacolade, remember him a couple of weeks ago. He's up to fifth. Out of four, the top two will set them on their way. It would truly be a story if Red Dragon wins this one. And then the uh, eldest member of that family, Beaver, wins the main event for the tour. Could happen. Although right now, Brent is losing second to Renadette. And nobody seems to have anything for the 45 of Brian Hoare. 
Seven to go, and unless there's a caution, I think Brian Horace got this one. Reddit at his move to second. Third is Brent. Fourth is your points leader, Dave Wickham. He will most assuredly maintain that position. Fifth is Lacolade. Sixth is Fecto. Though top six have pulled away a bit. Trouble in four should be no caution. Ron Lamel, Galen Wood come together. The black flag for Lamel. Apparently, Ron is a little uh, antsy at Galen for their incident early on when they were battling for the top spot. The 11 drove into the back end of Galen, turned him around, and a very quick black flag for Lamel for his actions. Black flag again for Lamel. He is uh, being sent to the pits. Galen going another lap down to Brian Hoare. Ready to try to catch Brian, but I'll tell you why. I would think Brian has let up a little bit because there's no need to push it here. Ready to run second. Brent Dragon third. Without a caution, I don't see that changing a whole lot right now. Wickham fourth, luckily still fifth. Well, as I mentioned, Doug Hoare has won two. Brian Hoare has won zero. Maybe Brian will get his first tonight, although his dad will still rib him a little bit. Let's remember, Doug's not here tonight. Two to go for the Gostas 45. The Fairfax Auto 76 runs second. That is Reddit at the Dragon Wagon of Brent Dragon and the Zero, his third, and those three are enough. This is the part that they're not going to be able to exchange positions. The white flag comes out. It'll take a mechanical failure to change our top three at this point or an awful bad driver error, and those three guys don't make a lot of those mistakes. Into three, out of four, the gas Dash 45 of Brian Hoare for the first time this year at Airborne gets the checker flag. Steve Reddit at third, Brett Dragon for third. Let's try this again. Brian Hoare wins it. Steve Reddit at second. Brian Hoare third. Dave Wickham fourth. Another terrific round for the 17 of Lonnie Lackland who will be fifth. So there was the top five shows Brian Hoare, Reddit at Dragon, Wickham, and Lonnie Lackland. Next on tab will be the American Canadian Tour. We won't be showing highlights, but you can see a bunch of people running off in turn two to run to the infield. We call this the parade, if you will. These are all the ACT teams trying to run down, set up their pits. We have a brief intermission at the track, but everyone wants to get just the right pit set up because they know that that could make the difference between winning or finishing way back in the add-on 150. Next on tap, still to come on Motorsports Magazine, our Street Stock main event highlights. Getting set for the final event of the evening, a 15-lap main event for the Mini Maniacs of the Motorway. 18 set to answer the call. While we have this opportunity, we'd like to uh, talk about the add-on 150 and congratulate first-time feature winner for the 94 season, Mike Rowe with the MGM-sponsored number 24 machine. If you'd have told me the MGM car would have won, I'd say, oh, good, Beaver wins another. Well, it wasn't to be as early in the event. Ignition problems put him four or five laps behind, and he was not able to do anything after that. Though he did run as quick as the leaders. But it was the 24 of Mike Rowe in victory lane. Second place to the 42 of Don Forte. Third place went to the 15 of Derek Lynch. Pretty sure he'll take over the points lead. Fourth, got to be a career best for this guy. Hey, the haze jinx was not in effect as the 16 of Kip Stockwell with a great fourth place finish after starting outside row one and fifth to the auto pro number 11 machine of Claude Leclerc couple of stories though two dominant cars Brad Layton and Ralph Nason late and I mean late in the event do the old tango up in two take each other to the back of the pack it would look like it'd be decided between them wasn't to be micro victorious as I said let's wrap up the festivities with the last event of the evening that honor going to the street stock division 18 set to do battle for 15 laps starting on the pole in the 11 machine james barno outside in the 75 chuck farnsworth row two to the inside the 01 of keith nolan and on the outside the 28 is skip liberty 
third row, inside Tony Broussard with a 71, outside the 99 of Andrew Carey. Vardo and Farnsworth put them on their way. Vardo to the inside, keeps the line. Will hold on to the lead coming out of turn two. Behind him, though, some great action. The next four cars all together. Nolan, Farnsworth, Liberty, and Broussard. Some bumper bagging up between the first set of turns here in the first lap. Everybody keep them heading straight, though. And Vardo from the bowl will lead the first lap. The cars are, everybody are watching, the top three points guy, Brian Pugh, Dan Gibbs, Rick Frenny, all run together near the back of the pack. So they have a good chance of getting a pretty good look at each other for the entire event. Four wide in three, they back off in front of them. Farnsworth wide with a 75 will lose some spots. He brings it back into the racing group and into the side of Leo Duggan, but everything straightens out. Three wide going through two. Trouble between Gibbs and Brian Bach, they straighten themselves out. No caution yet. Four, I'll make it three wide now up in three. Guys behaving themselves pretty well as we have a new leader to complete the third lap, the 0-1 of Keith Nolan. Second is Varno. Third is Liberty. Battle for fourth side by side. The rest, 71 of Broussard and the black two of Duggan. One car on the move. Second generation competitor, Sean Felton. Sean is kind of sandwiched right now in three, but does seem to be making forward momentum and that's all you can hope for when you're out there especially in this division it is still Nolan who is getting reeled in by pole setter Jim Varno about six Carlins back to Liberty in third followed by Broussard now Trombley to the inside of Fountain and Terry going to try to follow the same spot uh, Brian Pugh making a move on the outside in the 29 out of the top three points guy the only guy moving Dan Gibbs, Rick Freye, mired in the back of the pack. Matter of fact, Freye only has two cars beat, and we are six laps into this thing. It is still Nolan and Varno, your top two. Liberty is third, but all of a sudden they're reeling him in in a big way, and Skip's got ten laps, or oh, nine laps to go, and I don't think he's going to hold out for that long unless he finds a little bit more momentum out of that black 28. No caution yet. These guys are behaving themselves very well tonight so far. Somehow you think that means we're going to have a problem with the last few laps, but maybe not. One guy who is having a good run is the 11 of Arno. Led the first few laps, is running second, but now Liberty to the inside. Courtesy of a Terry Gunner bump from behind him, moving into second. The hole is still open for the 60 of Gunup to move through. If Varno doesn't cut him off, and Varno won't be able to do that. And now the train will move to the inside of the 11 machine. Halfway that time by for the 01 of Nolan. Dan Gibbs is starting to move. He is now a couple of cars behind Brian Pugh. Brian is running ninth because he has all sorts of traffic trouble. And Gibbs is right on Brian Pugh's back bumper. Rick Freye only has five cars beaten now. So Rick is not having the best of nights, but... That car takes about two laps to get to the front when he gets his mind set on it. Positions two on back are constantly being switched three, four times every lap as everyone sticks their nose in front of each other and then get right past. Nolan leads it. Now Sean Fountain pulls off a masterful move to move into second. With five to go, it is Nolan Fountain. Gunup, Liberty, Brian Pugh, Bob Well, Dan Gibbs, Corey Trombley. Well, those last five or six drivers are so close together that any of them could beat any of the others. They are in a big bunch heading down the back stretch into turn three. No caution. Two-thirds of the race completed, and they haven't unfurled the yellow. I don't believe it, fans. Smoke from the 60th Terry Gunup. Don't know if it was tire smoke or what exactly. Car still moving pretty good. A spin in two. It's the 11 of Arno. He should refire the automobile. He does so, no caution. And the battle for the top spot is a good one. Nolan, who has led the majority of the race, has a mirror full of Sean Fountain. 
But Shaw looks at his mirror, and it's full of the points leader, Brian Pugh. Fourth is Wells, fifth is Gunup, sixth is Dan Gibbs, seventh is Frenier. I told you that seven car when he gets it open, it will make a move. Coming out of four, it's getting awful tight, fans. Two to go. It may be the longest mile of street stock racing this year. Nolan and Brian Pugh side by side. Shot by, looks to the inside. Nolan is actually blocking Fountain at this point. But hey, when you're ahead of a guy in position, you don't have to move over. Brian Pugh gets to the front, looks to increase the points lead. Trouble at four to second point, but Dan Gibbs involved. Gibbs and Gwenna come together. Gibbs with totally sideways straighted out. The white flag comes out and we have not seen a yellow. Looks like we are going to have a green to checker with no yellow interruption. And as I say that, two cars fly off the back stretch. Stuck in a trouble. No caution. We're on the last lap. And pick it up another win. Mr. Dominator at this point, the 29 of Brian Pugh. Second. Finally gets that strong run. He's been strong all year. Never seems to have the luck go its way. Sean Bound will be in the runner-up spot. Show position to the old one to Keith Nolan. Fourth to the eight to one of Bob Wells. Rick Frey having to settle for fifth, and he is highly disappointed. It's a 77, maybe with the exception of the 29, probably the strongest car out here most weeks. Wasn't to be tonight, however. Well, another victory. What is this, four or five in the year for the 29 machine of Brian Pugh? He is definitely becoming the dominator in this division, no doubt about that. He had a bit of a break tonight, however, as the Gibbs and Freyes automobiles were mired in traffic most of the way, and that allowed Brian to move to the outside, get up front. I think maybe uh, he can thank some of the cars behind him that were blocking some of those close guys in the points. As a matter of fact, taking a look at the points, coming in tonight, I said Brian was the points leader. He had a 22-point lead on Dan Gibbs and about a 29-point lead on Rick Frenier. So he will increase it, no doubt about that. Good chance to congratulate our winners. As you can see here, Brian Pugh wins the Street Stock main event, the Flying Tiger main event, second of the year for the 53 of Gary Woods. Light Mile Sportsman, win number one in the 94 season at Airborne for Brian Hoare. And as we said, the add-on 150 for the Cars and Stars of the American Canadian Tour. Bit of a surprise here. The 24 of Mike Rowe, courtesy of some attrition in front of him, gets to the front and hangs on to be Dom Forte, Derek Lynch, Kip Stockwell, and Claude Leclerc. That will wrap up action from Airborne for tonight, fans, for the missing Rob Knowles, who'll be back in attendance next week, and it is mid-season championship night next week. Extra points on the line. That'll be interesting. For Rob Knowles, I am Steve Hayes. Looking forward to next week's action here at Airborne. Until then, have a good week, everybody. We'll see you at the races.